Perfect. It is live. Well, hello, hello, everyone. I hope you're doing very, very well on this fine Sunday afternoon, or rather, well, I guess it depends on what country and what city you're in. But at any rate, hope you're doing very, very well. Just going to do a quick check to make sure the audio is working. I think it is, but yes, it is working. Excellent. So today on the channel, we have... <laughs> Yes, indeed, we do. So I'm excited for our um, our chat here. So I think a good place to start is uh, I like your name. So it's Shahida or Shadiha? Shahida. Shahida. Okay. What's the background behind it? Um. Okay. Well, background is um, part of my family is Muslim. So a lot of us have Arabic names. So my name, my mom picked it. She got it from her uncle. She was looking for a name. And so that's the name she gave me. <laughs> Interesting. So yeah. your family, is anyone born in an Arabic speaking country or is it just the roots eventually are from there? Um, no, I just think that it was kind of like uh, you know, at the time when there were like the five percenters of the native nation of Islam and stuff like that was going around. So that generation, which would be like my great uncle, my grandmother, that generation was exposed to that. And so they became into that and then their kids and then their grandkids. And, and so that part of the family is, is um, that's what they do. So they're not from any specific country. Interesting. That's super cool. Where Where do you live currently? Um, I'm currently, <laughs> I'm in the New York City area. Um, I'm actually originally from here. I just moved back here after moving around a lot. My mother, God rest her soul, she was um, in the military. So we moved around quite a bit. And so I found myself back home about a year ago. Wow. Military. So I've heard, I, I've never, so let's start here. I've never really had a chance to have like a, you know, a good conversation with anyone or really known anyone close who had family in the military. But I've heard that military families, there's a lot of moving around. Is that true? Yes, it is. I don't think we moved quite as much as we could have because um, I kind of went my own way once I turned 18 and started doing things on my own. But I think if I would stay with my mother during her whole military career, we would have moved around a lot. Um, I know her first duty station was in Missouri. So we lived in Missouri for a year. Then after that, we went to Germany for three years. Whoa. Um, Interesting. Okay. <laughs> and then she moved back. But I stayed in Germany for three more years by myself. And then when she moved back, she moved back to West Point, New York. Um, then from West Point, she moved was in Fort, uh, Fort Stewart in Georgia. And then from there, she was in Fort Eustis in Virginia. And then from there, she actually ended up retiring and then came back up to New York. So she retired back up here. Nice. So you, so you spent three years or four years total in Germany then? Six. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do you speak, um, so I assume you speak German, then. that's my assumption. Yes, that's my, that's my strongest language, is German. Interesting. What else do you speak? Um, well, my French is rusty, but I did study French in school while I was in Germany, oddly enough. I studied French uh, from like the seventh grade to like the 11th grade. And I went to France twice while I was in school in uh, Germany. And so my French is rusty because I haven't really been able to keep up with it like I was with Germany because I lived there. So I had friends there and I could communicate with them still. But I never made any ties to like friends in France because I didn't go there for long periods of time. So my French is rusty, but um, I know that and then I also have a foundation in Spanish um my Spanish is kind of like 
Spanglish. I just pretty much <laughs> say what I know how to say. And then I put the English word if I don't know it or the English words, because, you know, here in New York City, everybody does that. So <laughs> really? So like if you're speaking in, let's say, German in New York City, you would speak more of like a Englergen. That's a thing. Like, you, you, like Englergen, like English German. Like if you're speaking English, like German in New York, would you would 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 you speak more of like an English German mix? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, like Englergen. Do I don't know how you, what the term is, they but call it Denglish. Okay. because <laughs> so, German in Germany, um, they say the word German is Deutsch, and English is the same English. So German and English mix, they say Denglish. Got um, it. Okay. Yeah, but they do do that, um, especially in workplaces in Germany. I used to work for a German, well, I do, I work for another German company now, but the German company I used to work for, we used to work in Germany a lot, and it was very, very, certain fields, it's very common for, to, to just say the English word, if there's no German word, or you don't know the German word. Hmm. What, uh, what kind of work did you do in Germany when you were there? Like, what kind of company was it? Um, I was going back and forth. It was actually aviation. So it was dealing with the aircraft parts, the engine parts, the, the maintenance, the repair, the overhaul, the resale of it, purchase of it. So that's what I was doing. And let me tell you that that was the best way to improve my German because I knew how to speak German, but I didn't know like business German and I also didn't know like aviation terms but I I, I didn't really know it in English either so mm -hmm. it kind of helped my English too but <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so do you find like when so how do I say this I guess why was why was working at that company what did it do for your German like why was that such an important thing for you well, I worked as a liaison. So basically my job was like an official translator because the workshop was in Germany and the customers were in North America. Well, I did start to eventually get customers worldwide, but my main customer portfolio was in North America. Got so it. what I, the, the, in aviation, everybody's supposed to speak English, right? Supposed to, mm -hmm. but in the, the technicians and the engineers, there were a lot of people that were like, I, I'm not speaking English, I refuse to speak English. And that's kind of hard to do when your customer base does not speak English, I mean German, and they don't wanna be in touch with the customers either. So basically, I basically communicated with the workshop and a lot of times it was in German. So basically I was speaking German every day. So is that something you'd recommend for people? Would you recommend that they try and find some kind of work or something that something to get involved in that makes them use that literally in a way forces you, quote unquote, forces you to use the language? Do you think that's something that would you recommend that to everyone? I definitely would recommend that to everyone. Um, obviously, you have to you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you can't perform. So you want to be careful about that. Like, for instance, if you've never taken Spanish before, don't try to get a job like a job as a liaison. You don't want to do that. But if you're like conversational, like you can have a conversation, you can watch TV, then I definitely would because it would stretch you a lot. And it's definitely something you can do. You know, you can learn that. And because you'll be in touch with it daily, you'll learn quickly. Right. Interesting. How did you get to a conversational point? Did you, did you engage in any activities that forced you or encouraged you to speak and use your German regularly, but maybe weren't quite as intensive as, as working in a translation kind of environment, or was it completely different? Well, what I did was I made it a point to get in touch with German people. Um, and when I did, what I would do is I would practice my German with them until like the conversation was like no longer comfortable or I could no longer manage it. And then I would switch to English. So I just kept doing that because I, I you know, you can't, if you just say, oh, it's not good enough and you don't use it, you're never going to stretch yourself. 
So mm -hmm. I would just force myself like, okay, I don't know how far along in this conversation I'll be able to keep up the drumming, but I'm at least try because if I don't practice, it's not going to get better. And then pretty soon it went from, you know, just saying, hi, how you doing? How's everything? Oh, the weather's nice. And then it got into, you know, oh, I did this this weekend. Oh, I did that. And then pretty soon it got into, oh, well, I think it's unfair that the government's doing this. <laughs> right. <laughs> isn't that scary though? Like, isn't it ner like nerve wracking? Like I can imagine, I'm trying to imagine you're like, I'm just trying to put myself in your shoes. You're here in Germany, you're there in Germany and you don't necessarily speak super fluently. And here you're going out talking to people in German full well knowing there's going to be a point where they start to talk and you're like, blah, blah, blah. what did you say? Huh? Can you say that again? What? Huh? Like, w was that scary for you or were you, or were you, was it okay? Um, I don't think it was scary for me. I, I know that sounds weird because I know it, it should have been scary. Or is it different? Sorry to cut you off. Sorry, I just thought of it. Or is it different for you because you were so used to moving around and always meeting new people and, or is it, I don't know, like, sorry, I'll let you finish your thing. I just wanted to get that thought out. No, no, please. Um, I, I don't know, I guess. Cause, you know you're from new york so um you know new york is like everybody says it's the melting pot there's no city like new york you know and you get exposed to different people from different places all the time you know tourists all the time so oh we may have lost you there no you lost me oh uh, wait wait i hear you but your video is frozen that's the only thing Oh, now I don't hear you either. Oh, oh we're having a slight issue. Let's see if you can make it back. Oh, you might be back. You hear me? Yes, you're back. Ah. <laughs> I always have technical difficulties. I don't know why. So, um... It should have been scary for me. I wasn't scared, to be honest with you. We first moved to Germany. It was pretty much like living in the US because we kind of lived on post, which is like this military installation. Everybody's American in the stores, everything. So it wasn't unless you left the military installation that you were in touch with the actual German economy and people and stuff. So I was fine the first couple of years, but then finally I decided, you know, I want to learn German. And so when I decided to do that, my mom was the one, I wasn't scared. Like I was like, I'll take the train to Berlin by myself. And my mom's like, no, I don't want you to do that. Like, what if you get lost? And I'm like, I buy the train, how can I get lost? <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So you spent a few years without without knowing German then? Yeah, I was studying French. I, I actually, to be honest with you, I had no intention of learning German ever. So the first two years, I think we moved there, I was like 13. So 13, 14, and I want to say like around 15 is when I was like, I think I want to learn German because I was starting to hang out with German friends, friends that I had that were like American, but their parents were German. And so we would go out into like, they had these fests and there would be like other German teenagers. So it was like one of them I had a crush on and he didn't speak English. So I was like, I want to learn German. Aha, and <laughs> that's what I mean. We got there eventually. That's the <laughs> <laughs> So that's how it happened. That's exactly how it happened. And then it was so funny because it was like, I was like, no, I'm going to learn German. Like if I can learn French, I can learn German. And um, I was like, I was really on a mission. Like I was like trying to take everything in. I started changing the channel because um, on the military installation, we had this network called AFN, which was in English. And then we also had British cable. So we had the British channels. So I started changing the TV, started watching the German channel, started listening to the German radio. I started buying German teen magazines. And then like, then I got like a, a kind of a dictionary. And so I was just trying to read and like understand words and stuff like that. Um, and so then I would like try to talk to people 
And then it was so funny because like by the time I became like kind of good at it, feeling comfortable, I totally forgot about that guy. Um. <laughs> hmm. So he was just like the spark, but yeah. it was just a little, it was like a small spark. Yeah. And then... <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. Do you still even talk to him? Do you still talk to him? No, I mean he wasn't my friend. He was he was what he was was one of my friend's boyfriend's friends. So I didn't really know this guy. Like I just would see him like once in a while. Like we should track like this guy down. We should track him down and we should show oh. him this video and be like, "You are the reason why." <laughs> oh my god. And you know what's so crazy? He spoke two languages. He he was actually originally from Russia. But he moved to Germany with his parents when he was little. So he spoke Russian and German. He just didn't speak English. Hmm. Okay. I know. Got it. I don't know where this guy is. I just know his name is Valdemar. That's it. <laughs> Wait, what's his name? One more time? Valdemar. Valdemar. That sounds awfully close to Voldemort from Harry Potter. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, that's not him. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. So you're in Germany. You spent six years in Germany. You learned German. You were learning some French. Did you like language learning at that point, or when did it when did it turn into something that was more than, oh, I like this German guy. Oh, I like German. Oh, reading is fun. Oh, TV's fun. Like when did it go from that, and when did it start to become more serious for you? Actually, when when I got back to the U.S. And I was having a conversation with my mom and my mom was like, you need to get a certificate in every language, you know, I should have listened to her, but um, you need to do this because, you know, a lot of people don't have access to knowing and, and I would, you know, I would always be like, no, I'm not native, you know, I'm not. And she was like, it doesn't matter. The fact that you study these things and you know them, you know, you should really do something. And um, I just thought to myself, um, so does that mean that I like languages then? Because I, I didn't think of it like that. I, I just, like, Spanish was actually my first love. I grew up listening to Spanish, and, and I tried to learn as much Spanish as I could, when, you know, before school and all that stuff when I was younger. And then I switched to French, and then I did German, and, and it never occurred to me that I like languages until um, I think my mom said that. And then like right after that, I ended up watching some Italian movie. Don't ask me what the movie is, but it was some Italian movie with subtitles. And I was just like, oh, love to know Italian. And then I was like, oh gosh, I guess I really do like languages a lot. And how long ago was that? That was a while ago. Oof, I don't even know, that was a while ago. That was when I first came back to the US. I first came back to the US in 2004. Mm -hmm. So I kept, I did try to learn Italian. I was like, I'm going to learn Italian. And I still know a little bit of the stuff that I learned. But then I said, you know what? Maybe I should focus on the three that I know, like getting them to the level I want them to be and then start with like Italian. And then um, to kind of keep up with German, but not. And then it wasn't until about, I want to say, four years ago when I was like, okay, I need to get back into my languages. And then I did. Got it. Cool. So what, let's, let's get a list here. What languages do you speak? So you mentioned English, you mentioned German, you talked about some French, talked about some Spanish. Like what's your list? Um, and I know a little bit of Italian, like I know enough to impress Italians, but I can't have a conversation. <laughs> so you enough to, if you, if there's a guy that you like, there's enough to like start the conversation and break the ice and then past then you just cross your fingers and hope he speaks English. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's it. And then Dutch, surprisingly, I realized that I could understand Dutch. I didn't know this. I was on, somebody sent me a video. Um, somebody sent me a video years ago. They were like, oh, Shahida, you, you know German. This is, you know, you might like this. So I'm watching the video like, I understand this. But what dialect is this? Because I'm having a hard time. Like, I understand what they're talking about. But I only, it's like certain things I'm not, 
I don't know those words. So I'm like, okay, what dialect is this? So then I watched the video, you know, I'm struggling through the video. And then at the end, they put the link to where you can find out more. And it's like www.whatever.nl. I'm like, this is the Netherlands. No wonder. And I was like, wow, I understood a lot for that to be Dutch, you know? So I went on Duolingo and I was just like, okay, I'm going to try to, this is recently. I was like, since I understood Dutch, speaking Dutch a couple months ago at an event and I understood what she was, what they were talking about. So I said, let me go on Duolingo and see if I could just kind of sharpen this thing up somehow. Um, but listening to Dutch and reading Dutch, let me just tell you right now, I don't know where that's going to go. <laughs> well, we might have uh, frozen again. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's just, this is a slight lag from time to time. It's not the end of the world. I think right now you're, it's starting to catch up. I think it's, it might be back. This is bad. That's all right. <laughs> It's not a problem. Not a problem. Um, um, what was I going to ask you? There's something you said. Ah, yes, you made a list of your languages. Now, um, so do you uh, do you work in in the field of languages now? Like, I know you have um, Black Girls Learn Languages. Um, I know you have your YouTube. I, I see you have um, your website and everything. Is that what you do for work or do you do something separate and that's on the side or what's the whole, what's the whole scenario with that? Yeah. So black girls learn languages is something separate. I do my actual daytime job. I work for a German company. I was working for a French cosmetics retailer, which actually was pretty cool because I was working in fifth Avenue. So I was dealing with the, the tourists and I was in touch. I was like in touch with German and French and Spanish almost every day. But I had to let that go because two jobs is too much for me. So this main job that I do, it's a German company. It's a German pharmaceutical technology company. And I'm not really in touch with German like I thought I would be. But I still am in touch with German by way of the application because I use SAP. And so I switched the SAP to German. What so What is SAP? So SAP is a program that a lot of, um, if there's like supply chain in Germany, I noticed a lot of German companies that do have deal with supply chain use it. And it's a way, it's an interface to be able to have a good overview of material movement. Um, like if you're ordering material, ordering repair of material, it's really a good way to have an overview. The only thing is it has a lot of masks which is, I guess is to its benefit because every mask you go in, it saves so you don't lose what you've done. But it's not very straightforward. It's not like, oh, I need the tracking number, click on this. It's like, go into this screen, then go into that screen, mm -hmm. then go into this screen, then go into that screen, then go into the header, and there it is. It's like that. So. Very convoluted. Yeah. Nice. So then what is what do you do with Black Girls Learn Languages? What is, what is that all about? Well, basically to give visibility to the fact that we're here, we know languages and we like languages too, um, because I received that a lot when I was younger growing up. Um, like for instance, I won't forget when I, we were stationed in uh, Fort Leonard, Missouri, I was studying French and um, the French teacher was like, oh, you should do like come to the French club. We have it like twice a month or something like that. And I went to the meeting and I was the only black person there. And it was just like, I didn't know anybody like at all. And I was just like, okay, you know, whatever it is, what it is. And then I just was like, okay. So, and, and I think it was like, I just would go to certain things after school and, and it would be like nobody else. And then people would be like, so amazed, like, oh you're learning french and oh i didn't you know okay well that's different what makes you want to learn that or you know when i was in germany and they'd be like you know okay that's different black girls don't usually learn languages and i was just like what <laughs> and i was hmm. just like I, and i and it's like i i know that can't be true like like statistically speaking i cannot be the only black person 
on this earth, the only black girl that's interested, like I know that I can't be, even though it seems like it. So I said, you know what, let me see. If I can't find the community, then I would just create it. So that's what I did. And um, I have a Facebook forum. And it's like over 500 something members of women that are that know different languages, speak different languages. And we talk about different things. Like we talk about like I might post in there like, oh, I, I saw this website. Like I found this Spanish website. It's called um, uh, Hook Up Spanish. And apparently it's like all these dirty things and stuff you say to pick up people in Spanish. So I shared it like, isn't this crazy? Like. And then people commented <laughs> or like somebody might say, hey, I'm really trying to learn Russian and I'm looking for media. And then somebody else might chime in like, oh, this is really good. I used this. It helped me. So, you know, we talk about language. We I mean, we also talk about just silly things, too. Like I, I might post in there something like, oh, I got a message from somebody and it said X, Y, Z. Isn't it crazy? So we talk about a lot of things, but mostly we're able to have these conversations with each other, like about language. And I really like that. Hmm. So basically, it's just it's a community of of of, of black people across. I assume across the world, or is it mostly America? Um, I think it's mostly American women. There are a couple of women in there from different countries, like um, from Europe um, and from Africa. I mean, continents, not countries, but um, some countries in Europe, some countries in Africa. Okay. Um, I don't, I think there might be somebody from South America. I don't really think there's anybody really from South America, but mostly from Europe, US, and then some people from Africa. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's fascinating. It, it's interesting for me to see how many subcategories there are in language learning communities. Um, and it's, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. It's it's interesting to see how. It's it's interesting how when you look at languages. I'm trying to think of how to, how to articulate this. One thing with with languages. I'm, how do I say this? Hmm. I I guess when you look at languages, language is something that everybody has, right? Whether you are whether you like it, don't like it, whether you're black, white, from. China from no matter where you're from it's something that everybody has right? right and it's I don't know it's it's something where I don't know I find it's one of the it's, it's one of the few things that everybody has like if you look at the world you look at music there's this there's, there's very few things that everybody likes music is something virtually everyone has some liking to you know right. art or you know um, religion is something that is like almost a pillar like um language like there's, there's very few things that are inherent to everybody you know what i mean right and what's interesting to me about languages and really any one of those let's say pillars interesting to see how many there, how there's different subcategories in them you know yeah well, I also wanted to say that I also use it to encourage and inspire because I I didn't let it deter me. Like, for instance, when I was struggling with things and I felt like I want to talk to someone who, who's like me, who may have like a certain vernacular or what have you that may be struggling with trying to understand this concept. And I don't see anybody and this is hard and I want somebody to encourage me. And I just, it's just my love of language kept me going. Like, I was just like, I'm just gonna keep going cause I know I'm gonna get it eventually. But there's some people that may be like, you know what, I'm not gonna do this because you know what? I don't see no black people doing this anyway. So why am I trying to do this? You know? Totally, it's, you need, you need that example. You need someone, someone has to pave the way in many respects. So I'm really hoping that I've had a couple people write me, actually several, um, over the course of me having it. Like, I'm, I love your page. It really inspires me. You know, every time I think Chinese is too hard, you know, or every time I think 
Italian is too hard or somebody else, you know, they were just like, you know, I'm really grateful for your page and the community because I know that I can come in here and complain about something mm -hmm. <laughs> and that somebody like really understands it. Like they truly understand it. And um, that makes me happy when people tell me that because that's, that's really what I want. Um, I mean, eventually I do want to be able to like have scholarships and stuff that would be really great mm. um or even a fellowship honestly that would be really great um i know that takes some time but you know i really would like to do more you know just for you know women because language really language changed my life like i i i had some really good opportunities because i learned languages so mm. like like what like the last job that I had, that was a very good opportunity. I got to learn. First of all, I got to acquire SAP, which is what got me this job. Um, SAP is a good skill to have because a lot of companies use it. And it's one of the things where if you're not going to be coding, like it's a skill. Like it, you can use that to lead you in your job search if you don't have anything else. Because like for me, I have a lot of soft skills, but I don't have a lot of technical skill. So I was able to get that. The second thing is I was able to go back and forth to Germany. I was able to work in Germany, just be there because that's what I wanted to do. Um, I just built some connections with people. I was able to continue to travel for really, really cheap. <laughs> um, it was a really good, it was a really, really good um, experience. And I'm really grateful for it because I really got to know, like, I really got to improve my German. I really got to expand my vocabulary with stuff I never would have used before. I got to learn some business etiquette as far as working in Germany, like the dynamics um of like when you use the formal when you don't use the formal like i got to get like hands-on experience working in a german environment which i plan to do again in the future so it's good to have that little that little practice time um and this job that job afforded me this up actually i think the reason i got this job was because i speak german because they said that nobody in the office speaks german which was surprising right. to me because it's a German company. But yeah, nobody in the office. I think there's like one guy from Germany that's there pretty, you know, often, almost every day. Um, but that's it. Nobody else in the office speaks German except him and I. And then like every once in a while, they'll get an email and they're like, oh, translate this. What does this say? And then, and then I have to like tell them what it says. But um, I'm really glad because this was like a good opportunity. I like what I do. There's room for professional development. And um, they also have like this global mobility program that I'm interested in where you can learn different things from different parts of the world. So mm -hmm. I think those are some really good opportunities. Um, I got the opportunity to go to France twice, um, Luxembourg, uh, Netherlands, all because I could communicate with people who were willing to take me. Right. Like they, like it was just really like, hey, these people don't speak English. I was able to communicate, build a build a connection with them, build a friendship, and then they just took me to Netherlands. Hmm. Right. So I have a random question for you. This is, a, and we'll end on this one. It's a hypothetical one that came to mind as you're talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Clearly, language has helped you in um, in your professional life. So let's let's imagine a world we are now. Let's say we're two hundred years in the future. We're in this futuristic world, and we've gotten to the point. The human race has gotten to the point where everybody wears an earpiece, and everyone speaks in whatever language they want. And your earpiece auto detects it, translates it, translates it for you, and you hear it in your mother tongue. It's flawless. Everyone's using it. It's a, it's almost like the Facebook of today, where everyone has it for the most part. And suddenly, you know, the same way that, you know, um, people who could paint really well would paint your picture because we didn't have cameras. When the camera came, the painters would no longer paint you because the camera would have the the, the that role essentially, like what like do you think you would still focus on languages or like what do you think you would do in that kind of world oh 
I think I definitely would. I'm not going to lie. Just just thinking about that hurts my heart because there's just so much about language, like culture. And it's just getting it's just so much more than an earpiece translating into your ear. Like Mm -hmm. it's just so much more than needing to on a superficial level, understand what someone's saying. And so um, I would definitely still focus on language. What I would be able to do with it, I don't know. I'm sure they'll have some kind of industry for people who are doing that. And I would find my way to do that. But um, that, I don't even know how to begin to imagine that. That that just crushes me. Hmm. Interesting. It's something I've, I've been thinking about this a lot. I want to start asking everyone that I ever talked to who's into languages this question to get the answer. Cause I'm curious now how people answer because I have a weird answer to it. Like this is my answer to it is, um, wait, before I would, you say it, yes. you say it, I, I do want to say this, but just like the camera has taken the place of the artist, they're still artists. It's just, they have a different function and there are photographers that have that function now because the camera, you can still create art with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm sure there'll be a way, but it still crushes me. But go ahead. I just well, I think, and actually, let's build on what you said. I think you're right. Like there would, it's it's just like just like you said, the artist used to paint people because there wasn't a camera. The camera came out, and now the artist might still paint portraits of people because that still exists, right? It's it's not that it's, you know, it's not that the camera came out and now we don't do portraits because that's even to this day in 2018, people still get portraits painted it just now their job description has changed right they are painting abstract art they're painting yes they're painting portraits but they also do this kind of art and maybe they use that same visual eye they had in painting for graphic design or they do left right and center this it's all over the board right what they're doing so totally like i i I agree with you like I, i totally agree with you um my and this is and my answer to it and it's not a real answer it's more my brain kind of goes i sometimes feel like the world works in like a pendulum so think of it this way let's take for example um let's take for instance records okay once upon a time there was no, there were no records then records were invented and they were super popular so like wow records are amazing then another technology came called the cd right CDs came and I was like, oh, why would I have a big record when we could have CDs are more compact, more practical. Then the pendulum went back the other way where it's like records are not popular, (laughs) right? And then time goes on and then we're like, whoa, records, what the heck is this? And now records are back, but in a different way. Now they're retro and they're cool. And it's like cool people have record collections and it's like, there's a culture around it, right? Right. And so where my brain goes and I'm just, you know, I'm just, you know, just throwing a hypothesis out there just based on my guess. But my assumption would be if there's ever something that came out, which really killed quote unquote language learning, where it wasn't as useful in the job market as it is today, my gut is at first it would be like, okay, there's a period of time where it's like, okay, it's not as useful as it used to be. Maybe there's some value, but it's not as valuable. Right. But then there'd be a time where there'd be something, someone, some experience where it goes back and it goes back, but not necessarily in the same way. For example, maybe a celebrity goes and like randomly learns some language and the people are like, whoa, that's so cool. Because that person's cool and they did it, it brings it back, but in a cool way or brings it back in a different style. And so me personally, I'd want to be like a 72 year old dude. And all of a sudden they like, they find me like 72 year old man speaks 72 languages. What? And people are like, wait, what? When the average person speaks two, it's like, what the heck? And then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's and not a real answer, so but go ahead. No, it is an answer. I think that's a good way to, I, I didn't even think about it, but that makes a lot of sense. Um, that's, I mean, it's, I guess you say it's not an answer, but no, that, that makes it, I didn't think of it like that. But I did want to say was, um, and what if it malfunctions? What if you using your thing and you know, because technology mal- malfunctions sometimes and you're in Greece and all of a sudden it kaput 
And then now you Oh, no, no, no. Hang on. I, I got to cut you off here because now, <laughs> because I can tell you, I can immediately off the bat probably point out three scenarios where you and myself and everyone included are, idi are not <laughs> smart in this regard. Google Maps? What if your phone dies? How are you? What? Well, so, like, the number of people that cannot read a map. I, I am willing to throw this up. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. I'm willing to bet good money. I would bet probably like, maybe not my hand, but like I'd bet like two fingers for sure. Like two fingers I'd bet, uh, maybe three, three fingers I'd bet. I'd bet three fingers that I would let someone cut them off. I'm willing to bet three fingers that there's at least 20% of the population that could not read a map if I gave it to them. Now let's obviously in a younger demo, but Right, so if their Google Maps died, they'd be like, what do I do? Right. So it's the same concept. Now, you say, but what if, blah, blah, But the world would have moved already, and the new generation, that would be the norm, and they wouldn't think of that. Right? Oh, wow. It's crazy <laughs> how the world... It's crazy how the world moves. It's crazy, like, oh, man, it's it fascinates me. Anthropology is a really fascinating topic for me. Yeah. And, uh, wow. Yeah, it's, uh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's super fascinating to be anthropology, like how humans, how humans behave. Like even when you look at the next time you get a chance, look at the behavior of someone who's even six years younger than you. Um, and you'll, it's, it's crazy to see because of how quickly technology moves, how differently they use, how differently they behave in comparison to you, even like with a six year gap. It's wild. It's wild. I, I'm, I'm just living it now because I'm back at university and back at college. I'm doing a second degree. And uh, it's uh, so I'm right now I'm in a, in a second year. What, what is a second year course? So most of the people are 19, you know, 18, 20 years old. So there's like a seven, six, five year age gap. And you're just looking around, and you're like, it's fascinating to see how you use technology and like, what apps you're using, like how you're doing it in comparison to how people in you know my age use it. And it's just, I don't know, it's, it's very interesting to me, but anyway. You know, that that's true. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do just what you suggested. Next time I'm gonna watch. <laughs> nice. Well, I think we can wrap this up here. Um, as per usual, Jahida's links are all in the video description below. Uh, people watching this, thank you. Hit the like button if you like the video. As per usual, leave a comment down below. Any final words, um, Jahida? Um, no, thanks for having me. Okay, so yes, I do have final words. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Well, everyone, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this chat, and um, bye for now.